So in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Market Chameleon to search for uh, put selling opportunities. And I'm just going to get right into it here. So if you head on over to uh, screeners, and this is a, a premium feature, you know, so unfortunately, you know, you need a premium account to be able to uh, access the screener. All right. So uh, under this, you go to naked puts and, you know, it doesn't matter if you're doing cash secured puts or naked puts or whatever, the screener still works the same. So there's a lot to take in on this screen. So I'll go over each section and each column. And so you can figure out what's exactly going on here. And then, uh, and by the end of this video, we'll create our own screen for this. So before we go over these parameters and create our own screener, I'm just going to go over these columns real quick so you can figure out what these uh, results are showing you. And uh, for symbol, that's pretty self-explanatory, but for each symbol, you can click on this little card right here and it gives you a, a lot more information on the stock. So you can see an overview all about it, you know, options, option chain, news, dividends, earnings, that stuff. And uh, then you have the stock price, and then the market cap, and uh, you could sort by all these too. So if you, you could sort by market cap, just to look at the biggest ones if you wanted to. And uh, here's the expiration, and you see this little E right here. That means there's an earnings coming up, or if you see EC or just a C, that means like there's an event. So this has earnings and an event, which is in this case an annual meeting of stockholders, whatever. But you just want to always check to see if there's an E there or not. You could also, you know, turn off earnings results up here later if you want to, but. That's what these E is for. And days to expiration, uh, this is pretty standard, but Market Chameleon does uh, trading days instead of calendar days. So that's something to keep in mind. So they do like, you know, they count Monday through Friday. And so you'll see less days to expiration than you may be used to in your platform. So that's something to keep in mind, they use trading days. And uh, here's the strikes and here's the put bid. This is what you can expect to get for, uh, you know, selling the put. And here's the deltas. And here's the moneyness, which is the distance from stock. So this is the percentage distance from the strike price to the stock price. And here's the IV rank. You know, this is just the default screener results here. We haven't, you know, put in parameters here. So you're just gonna, you know, see crazy IV ranks here. When we do it ourselves, we're not gonna have such, you know, elevated results, but here we are. And this is downside cushion to break even. So this is how far this, the uh, price can move against you before your trade becomes unprofitable. So, you know, for these ones right here, you could see it can move down quite a bit before, uh, you know, your trade becomes unprofitable, but you know, it's also doing it on, you know, garbage. So that's something to keep in mind. Like the riskier the stock, obviously the more downside cushion to break even you have. Everything is relative in options trading. So this next column is a little tricky. It's the percent time premium. And uh, how you figure this out is just by getting the dollar time premium and then dividing it by the stock price and how to get the dollar premium is uh, you don't have to figure this out. I'm just showing you where the value is coming from so you know what's going on. Uh, it takes the, uh, the put bid and then you subtract from that the intrinsic value of the option, if there is any. So like this one right here, this one is $1.12, but you see the, uh, the strike price is $4.50, but the stock price is $4.66. So right now there is no intrinsic value on this. So it would just be 112 would be the dollar time premium. But for this one right here, the strike price is five and the stock price is 466. So, you know, it would be the intrinsic value would be 34 cents. So you would do 151 minus 34 cents and that value divided by the stock price gives you the time percentage time premium. You know, it, it's a great way to quickly compare different results. And also uh, to get a more, you know, apples to apples comparison, for this percentage time premium, you should do it for uh, results that have the same, you know, pretty much the same days to expiration. Or, you know, alternatively, you could just annualize the results and then that would give you the best apples to apples comparison. Uh, if you want to annualize it, just take this, uh, this value right here, divide it by the days to expiration, and then multiply it by, you know, 252 because they're using trading days and there's 252 trading days in a year. So that's how you figure out the annualized results. You could also do it from a from my site right here. Let's go to yieldcollector.com, then go to calculators, then annualize returns. I have a calculator right here, so you just type in the return, the days in trade, and then the days in the year. I put trading days or calendar days. So this is a handy little calculator for a lot of different things. So you might want to bookmark it or whatever. But yeah, so that's how you you uh, figure out you know annualized returns for that. And if you want to do like specific day, say you wanted to do August 4th coming up or something. That's uh, five trading days away right here. So these values are all good to you know compare to each other because they're in the same amount of days to expiration. 
So that's how I would personally use that. When I'm, I'm going to show you when I do this, when we uh, create the scanner later, I usually just pick an actual date that I want to use and then go for it that way. Cause you know, you can press like the next 30 days, but then you're going to have all these different dates come up. So yeah, I like to actually just choose a specific, a specific date. And uh, this next one is a little tricky. The calculation, it says if flat percentage return against drawdown. And what this says here, if the option expires with the underlying stock price at the same level as the current price, this would be the percentage return of the strategy as a percentage of the total amount at risk. So what this is saying, like usually when people count, you know, percentage return if flat, it's just doing it on the entire risk of like a cash secured put trade, but market chameleon is actually doing it by amount at risk they're doing. It's calculated from a number of historical factors, such as the 20% downside move or the maximum historical move for a period of time equal to the number of the days of expiration. So what it's pretty much saying is it's either doing a 20% move or, you know, the amount that this stock has moved in like the last four years or whatever that it, it's back tested this. So it's not doing the entire risk for like a cash secured put. It's doing what the actual uh, risk against drawdown is from historical results. So it's kind of confusing, but that's where they're getting these calculations from. And here's the actual back test results. This is like the coolest part of the scanner. And here's the number of observations. So everything, all the screeners in Market Chameleon are like on demand back testing results, which is pretty crazy, like how fast they just shoot out. Every back tester I've ever used is, you know, takes forever to shoot results, but Market Chameleon does it like instantly somehow. So like each of these results, this one has 169 observations and it shows you the naked put win rate, the naked put average return, and then just the stock only win rate and the stock only average return to compare it to it. So it's pretty awesome. And this is like super powerful. This is why I like using the screener a lot. It's just no other screener pretty much has this feature on it built in just like this. And that's pretty cool. And you can actually see a lot more once you uh, load the analysis right here. And so for the uh, analysis, once you uh, load it, it's a lot to take in in this window right here. But it shows you your average return and the median return, which is very helpful, and the win rate. And it shows you the results for the uh, stock only as well. And here are the all the results for all of the uh, observations, 169 of them. And you see why it says this is during earnings time. And when there's no why there, that means it's not during earnings. So right there, you know, it shows every single thing and you could go over and see, you know, how each one performed. Here's a strategy and the stock only. So it's really cool to look at it that way. Like you see the median return for the stock only summary has been pretty horrible, but it's been pretty amazing for just the put strategy, which is interesting. And this is like right here up here is this super cool feature of this. It's only earnings period. So if you want to, uh, you'll, you'll find that when looking through a lot of stocks that if you're selling puts just during earnings, it could be extremely profitable, you know, obviously a little riskier, but you're collecting a lot more premium, your break evens will be farther down and you'll see a lot of times the results are get, will get a lot better. Like I, I, never, I didn't even check it for this, but it looks pretty good. You know, uh, 13.2% median return compared to just regular is 10. So it actually, you know, doing it during earnings was actually better and at a higher win rate. So that's something interesting to know in the 65 observations. So that's pretty significant too. So it's, it's always great to check both, just all of them or just during earnings. Cause you know, a lot of times doing it during earnings is actually profitable. And a lot of people just, they always just avoid earnings just because, you know, whatever, cause it's obviously a little riskier, but a lot of times the results are a lot better. So it's interesting to just to, to take a look for whatever stock you're doing. And uh, one more thing before we actually create the uh, screener, I just wanted to show what happens if under expiration, you can actually click on this and it will take you to the uh, profit calculator right here. And it has it all set up for you right here. You just add out however many contracts you want to 10 and just press calculate and you could see it, you know, right here on the graph. So this one would make uh, 1120. And uh, yeah, so if you wanna see the, the P&L chart of this, just that's how you do it. Okay, so for this screener, I'm just gonna show you the screener like I like to use, but you know, you could tweak these to what, however you want. And uh, you know, however risky, you know, you, you wanna be with it or however, how conservative you wanna be with it. So I'm just gonna do August 4th for the expiration. This is like a weekly, it's um, five days, five trading days to expiration from here. So I'm gonna do option price, just do over 10. And uh, open interest, I want to make sure it's at least over 100. Earnings dates, I don't really care about that, but you could you could pick whatever after expiration or none. Or I'm just going to press any. 
X dividend. I'm just going to press any, but you could do an X div after or none or just no X div. Like if you don't want dividend stocks at all, that's up to you. I'm just going to leave it at any company event. I don't really care about that time premium. Um, let me see. I'll just leave that blank for now. And I could always sort by that down here and uh, moneyness. Uh, I don't care about that Delta and uh, for Delta, I'm going to go above negative 0.50. Okay, so now if you see all the deltas, it's pretty much just at the money and all the way to out of the money. So we're getting rid of all the in the money ones is what pretty much what we're doing here. And uh, IV rank, you know, if you wanted to collect the most premium, you could do elevated and stuff here, but I'm just gonna leave this blank. And uh, if you actually want to, to check out IV rank, you know, you just do it right here. But I like to just, I'm gonna leave that blank because I like to get a lot of results because I'm gonna narrow it down a lot further coming up in a minute, so. I like to leave as much of results as I can because right here, naked put win rate. I want a pretty high win rate. So I'm going to do above 70%. So, you know, you're going to see, just watch these entries. They're going to keep going down the more, the more parameters I set here and naked put average return. Any positive is good. All right. Stock win rate. I mean, you could decide if you care, if the, if the stock is actually, you know, successful by itself or how the stock returns are by themselves. I kind of just, you know, care about if, if the, uh, the put is beating the stock, because sometimes if you just, you know, if you put this at high and also this at, at positive two, then a lot of times you won't get many results. So I'm just going to leave it blank for now. You can always, if you're getting too many results, you could always narrow it down by pressing, you know, above whatever or stock returns, any positive or whatever. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to leave it blank for now. And this is important, naked put versus stock win rate. So it goes strategy percentage win is greater than stock percentage win. Otherwise, you know, there's, there's no point in doing the strategy. And uh, naked put versus stock average return. So strategy average return is greater than stock average return. Okay, so you see we whittled it down to 238 entries. All right, and we have two more tabs up here. So this is where you could really specify what kind of things you want. I'm just going to do over probably over 1 billion is fine. Some small cap stuff is, is okay. Small ish cap doc price. This is up to you. Like, you know, you might want to do, you know, above 10 or above 25 or something, but you see right here, like SoFi is showing up. I actually like SoFi and I like, I like selling puts on SoFi. So I might want to keep this in here. So above five, I guess is fine. Cause I want to keep SoFi in there and uh, average stock volume over 1 million. Definitely maybe even more option volume, like over 2000 would be good. And right here, moving average indicator, because, you know, selling puts is, is, you know, pretty much a neutral to bullish strategy. I just want to do any bullish. So, you know, right now it's at 158. I'm going to go right here. You see like right here, you know, with a lot of these, there's some doubles, like you see SoFi and SoFi, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of Coinbase all over the place, a lot of, you know, Dash and things like that. I want to get it to only show one for each stock symbol. So how you can do that is just go to show best only. You could do it by the edge, the win rate, or the return if flat. I'm going to do it by this one. So now you're going to have a lot less results. So now there's 55 entries out of, you know, whatever 2000 or whatever there was when we first started. So I think that, you know, this is a, a pretty quick way to get a list of potential put selling opportunities. And before we you know we do some analysis on these, I'm just going to save this preset. So what you do is just go to save new preset, name it, whatever, then press save preset. Like I already have one in here, so I'm not going to save another one, but you get the idea. So now what you do is just go through the results and load the analysis of what, uh, whichever ones you like and take a look at what's the best opportunity. And right now it's sorted by percent time premium. And remember, because we did the same days to expiration, this is an apples to apples comparison. So this one's actually, you know, pretty much paying the most, but you know, it's a 45 Delta and earnings are coming up, which is why, you know, premiums crazy high right now, but it's got a good win rate, got a good average return. Let's just, uh, let me click on this. So this SoFi one here, it's got a 71% win rate. And uh, I like to look at median return. I think it's I think it's more helpful personally. Yeah, you see it beats out the stock, and you could look through all this. Here's the the non earnings, and here's the earnings ones. And now since this is an earnings trade, let's see how it did with just only earnings periods. So let's look at uh, 
70, you know, pretty much 72% win rate and a 2.8% median return. How did it do during only earnings? And it's an 83% win rate with a 4.8 median return. So it's actually done a lot better during earnings. You know, that's, you can't predict the future. It's not saying that that's definitely going to happen next time. It's just, this is what happened, has happened in the past. But, you know, it's a rel relatively new company and there's only been six observations. So take that for what it's worth. But it's good to see what actually happened in the real world. And I uh, just, you can go down the list and search. You could search for ones without earnings if you want to. Like this here, this dish, or, you know, Datadog. I, I've done puts on Datadog a lot right here. 77% win rate, you know, 1.6% median return. And it's it's beat out the, uh, the stock. So, yeah. Let's say you wanted to do even more research on like fundamentals or whatever. You could just like click on this. And it takes you to the overview. And, you know, there's tons of fundamental stuff you could do right here. There's just so much stuff here. Like I can't possibly go over it in one video. I'm going to make another video on just, you know, on fundamentals with Market Chameleon, but there's just so much to go over here and, you know, play with it yourself and try to figure out what's going on. But, you know, you just go to the summary and take a look at all this stuff right here. Trading stats and key ratios is very cool because you can com compare it uh, under key ratios. You can compare it to the peers, which is super helpful. So you can get, you know, at a glance, you could see uh, if the company is, you know, good or not, or you can just go to charts and look at like six month and do a 20 day, 50 day and 200 day, whatever, you know, so you can see how it's actually doing. And over here, switch it to like uh, RSI. So you can see the RSI value. And uh, yeah, that's how you could find put selling opportunities in Market Chameleon. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, remember to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. All right, talk to you in the next one.